Hi, this is Lesson 7.3, Convergent Divergent Series. That's going to be the main thing, and then we're going to get into Geometric Series, which you should be familiar with from pre-calc, and then the nth term test, which starts talking about the convergence of a series. Now, what is a series? Well, if you remember from last time, we did sequences, and that was just an ordered list of numbers. In this lesson, we're going to be working with series, which will take all those lists of numbers and make them into a sum. So we have what we call here summation notation or sigma notation, which you should be familiar with. But as a review, we're going to start with the first term, n equal to 1, and go all, all the way up to the infinite term of my a sub, one, a sub n's. And so this is your rule for our series. And then each one of the terms, you plug in each successive term all the way up to infinity, but we don't plug in infinity. Okay, so example number one. What happens as more and more terms of a series like this gets added together? And so if I write out each one of these, I'm going to start at n equal to 0. Plug in 0, you're going to get a 1. Plug in 1, you're going to get a 3. Plug in 2, you're going to get a 5. Plug in 4, you're going to get a 7. So this is like your ends again from before. And then if we keep on adding in more and more terms up to infinity, what's going to happen to my sum? Is it going to go to one value or is it going to diverge? Well, I hope you can see that it would diverge because it will go off to infinity. All right? And so that's what's happening to that sum. So the sum approaches infinity. Example number two, what happens as more and more of the terms of this sequence are added together? Let's first of all write out these terms. So if I put in a 1, I'm going to get 3 over 10 because it does say start at 1. And then if I do a subsequent one, 3 over 100, 3 over 1,000, 3 over 10,000, so on. What's happening? Well, if I do this in decimal form, it's going to be 0 0.333, because this is 3 over 10, 3 over 100, 3 over 1,000, 3 over 10,000, so on. Will this approach a specific number? And the answer is yes. This approaches a sum of one third. So what we'll say for this is that it does converge. This series does converge. So now we're going to go into what we call a geometric series. Now, if consecutive terms in a series have a common ratio, in other words, I'm multiplying by the same value every time to get to the, each successive term, the series is called a geometric series. In general, we have n equal to 0 to infinity of some starting term times a ratio raised to the n. Now, last time we did a n minus 1. Well, that's if n is equal to 1. That would give you your first term, but it depends upon how you start here. Then you'd have a plus ar plus ar squared plus so on. And the general form of the sequence is this whole thing. Now, if the ratio is greater than or equal to 1, the series diverges. If the ratio is, or the absolute value of the ratio, I should say, is less than 1, then the geometric series converges. So I think I said this first one wrong, but the absolute value of r greater than or equal to 1 means that r is greater than or equal to 1 or less than or equal to negative 1. This one here, absolute value of r means the distance is less than 1, means that r is going to be between negative 1 and 1. So that's just a different way to write it. Then the series will converge under this condition, and then the sum will be this infinite series sum that you learned in pre-calculus. Some of you may have learned in Algebra 2 as well. So a is the first term, and 1 minus r, that's just 1 minus the ratio. That's what this infinite sum is equal to. So let's do some examples and determine if we are convergent or divergent, and then find the sum if it is convergent. So if we look at this first one, uh, it's nice to write out the first few terms too. You're going to have 3, 3 halves, 3 fourths, Okay, so the numerator is not changing, and I should put a plus sign in between each one of these. And is this geometric? Yes, the ratio is going to be equal to 1 half. I'm multiplying by 1 half each time. And then the sum then is found by doing S sub n is equal to the first term, which we found to be 3 over 1 minus 1 half. 
If you multiply that out, you're going to get 6. Now, a couple of things here. I don't have to put this n because we're actually doing an infinite number of terms. So as n goes to infinity, so this would just be my sum here, it would be 6. And we would also say that this is convergent. Why? Because it is a geometric series. And we can say that this is a test, too. And then how about example four? What do you think? Is that going to be convergent or divergent? Well, what is your ratio? My ratio is 3 halves. I'm going to be multiplying by 3 halves every time. So straight away, you should be able to say that this is divergent because r is greater than 1. And that would be this case up here. r is greater than 1. And then you can put equal to or whatever. And then how about number 5? If I look at this one, the ratio looks to be negative 1 half. And under that situation, I am under this case right here, so this should be convergent. So if I figure out, first of all, what is my first term? So if I write this out, plug it in 1. This is actually the first term is negative 2. Then I'm going to go plus. If I take a half of that one, that would be a 1, and it would be positive, and then minus 1 half, and so on. So that one's going to be what we call alternating. Alternating means that we alternate between plus and minus. That doesn't mean anything for us right now in this problem, but since it is geometric with a ratio equal to negative 1 half, I'm going to take that negative 2, and I'm going to put it over 1 plus 1 half, because it's 1 minus 1 half there, 1 minus negative 1 half, and then I'm going to get negative 2 over 3 halves, which would give me negative 4 thirds. Then example number six, find the fraction form of the repeating decimal using the geometric series. So if I take this 0 0.08 repeating, that's going to be 0 0.08, 0 0.08, 0 0.08, and so on. And so this is going to be 0 0.08 plus 0 0.0008 plus 0 0.00008 and so on. Now if you notice, I'm multiplying by 1 over 100 each time, so that would be my ratio. It's going to be 1 over 100. And my first term, A, is going to be 0 0.08. So S is going to be equal to 0 0.08, all divided by 1 minus 1 over 100. And this is 8 over 100, all over 99 over 100. Cancel those, and we get 8 over 99. In fact, a magical thing is if you ever have any kind of repeating decimal, you can just take it and put it over 99. If you have three digits, I forgot dot, 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 3, 4, 5, dot, 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 this would be 3, 4, 5 over what number? I don't know, 999. Nine, nine. Try that in your calculator and play around with that a little bit. That's kind of fun. All right, then, in general, convergence of a series is less simple than convergence of a sequence. In fact, it's a lot more difficult. So let's look at this one. This one says the sequence a sub n is equal to 1 plus 1 over n. What happens with that? Well, it converges because the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n is equal to 1. So it goes to some limit. Now, if we look at a series, the series of this thing would add these numbers together. And if you notice, we keep on going, which would be dot, dot, dot. This thing does not converge because each one of these terms includes a 1. And we're adding in other things to that. So an infinite number of terms is going to be at least infinity. Uh, that doesn't make any sense, uh, what I'm saying. But I think you get the drift there. That's going to diverge. So a series cannot converge unless the terms approach a limit of 0. Now, this is only for a series. This is not for a sequence. The sequence just has to approach some number. Could be 1, could be 20, doesn't matter. But for this one, the series cannot converge unless the terms approach 0. So this is what we call so this is what we call the nth term test for divergence. And this tells us that if the limit 
as n goes to infinity of a sub n does not equal 0, then the overall sum also diverges. I mean, does diverge. Okay? This test is inconclusive if the limit is equal to 0. So in other words, the terms can go to zero, but it does not tell you that the sum will converge. But if you do have the terms that don't go to zero, the limit of the terms doesn't go to zero, then the sum will definitely diverge. So let's try some of these and see what happens. So this one looks pretty fancy, but it's not too bad because it's very similar to the leading coefficient deal that we did before. If I take the limit as n goes to infinity of my n factorial over 2 n factorial plus 1. This is my leading coefficient, and this is my leading coefficient. This becomes insignificant, so this would just be 1 half. Now, what does that tell me now about the series? Well, the series would diverge because the limit of the terms does not go to 0. Now, on the other hand, the sequence will go to 1 half. It does. But that is the marker, since that's not 0, that does tell us that the series does diverge. We're working with series now, so we want that conclusion to be made about the series. So that's a wrap on 7.3. I really appreciate you listening, and I hope that you have a super day. And just realize that now we're going to get into heavier and heavier stuff with these series. The geometric series, series kind of grounds us. Everything that we build on beyond this, though, we'll just get it more and more extended as we go on. Thanks. Bye.